popcorn junkie. Just me and my camera. Man with a movie camera. Uh, here to review The Man Who Killed Don Quixote. Terry Gilliam's much heralded or long awaited, rather than much heralded, long awaited uh, adaptation of the novel Don Quixote by Cervantes. Cervantes. Anyone who isn't a fan of Terry, Terry Gilliam, let me give you a quick grab on him. Terry Gilliam. Uh, directed first film that I remember him directing was Time Bandits, which was one of my favourite all-time films as a young boy. Does anyone else remember that film? Starting with that remarkable scene in a cupboard with the horses ploughing through the cupboard and onto the child's bed. It was just so magical and it was so weird and whacked out and surreal. And that's Terry Gilliam's thing. He made Time Bandits, he's made countless films, but he's made films like Brazil starring Jonathan Price, uh, 12 Monkeys with Brad Pitt, and he even made Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, famously with Johnny Depp. Um, so he's, he's one for kind of creating sort of surreal landscapes. Of course, he's part of the original Monty Python crew, not one of the main members, but he would do all of the cartoons, all of those surreal cartoons of shoes squishing people and legs squishing people and things like that. So surrealism is within him. But um, rather famously, he's been wanting to make or bring to the screen this adaptation of Cervantes' Quixote story for 29 years now, and there have been many failed attempts. The most notable was when he had uh, cast Jean Rochefort and Johnny Depp in the main parts of Quixote and Sancho Panza, his, his assistant. There's a famous documentary made about that called Lost in La Mancha, which charted the sort of travails of losing financing, uh, the terrible things that would happen on set. It was almost like that documentary about the making of Apocalypse Now, the, you know, the film about the making of the film and in the end the film was never made. So we've been waiting 29 years for finally Terry Gilliam's vision of Don Quixote to hit our screens and here it is, which is kind of a blessing and a curse uh, all at the same time. Gilliam himself, I think he's in his late 70s now, I mean if, if nothing else the fact that he's actually finally brought this to screen is an act of bravura, guerrilla style filmmaking. The man who killed Don Quixote stars Adam Driver as uh, an erstwhile filmmaker slash advertising executive uh, and Jonathan Price and it uses the sort of story within a story or the novel within a novel idea so uh, Adam Driver as a filmmaker is now making commercials so he's essentially sold out but when he was younger Adam Driver made a film inspired by the Don Quixote story where he found uh, a local cobbler in Spain uh, played by Jonathan Price and cast him as, as Quixote. Um, it so transpires that in the modern day of this film where we start on the film set of this ridiculous uh, commercial that involves a windmill, the quintessential windmill, and so what we find whilst on, this, on the film set of this film of this commercial that he's making, Adam Driver, uh, whilst they're all sort of you know off camera between takes, uh, between shoot days, uh, someone hands him a DVD or a CD or a VHS rather of his uh, student film that he made of Don Quixote in which he cast Jonathan Price as Quixote um, and this kind of triggers something in him and then the film within a film happens now this film never goes fully sort of surreal or into total magical realism though it kind of does I mean the whole notion of what Quixote is what is Don Quixote Don Quixote is the story of a man who goes on a mission and it's about the fantasies and the sort of egotistical belief that he's on a much more glorious journey and adventure than he really is I think in the book he's on a, he's on a journey to sort of rescue and and repair chivalry or chivalry has become a dying art form that he wants to rejuvenate um, but the, you know the idea of like that you know within ordinary things Quixote will see grand and gestures and great dramatic parallels so you know a flock of sheep will be an army and uh, the the flags or the the sails of a windmill will be a giant's arms flailing so you know it's all about imagination the story of Don Quixote is all about the sort of excesses of imagination seeing too much uh, reaching too far and the egotism of, of Quixote himself is believing that this is real and that you know although it's fanciful he's gonna just keep going and keep going and so you know he's He's driven, but he's sort of falsely driven into this ridiculous realm. It's interesting, you look up the word chaotic, and it sort of relates to, obviously, the original story, but it could be a description of Terry Gilliam. Extremely idealistic, unrealistic and impractical, which has been pretty much a fair description of almost all his films. There's always been a point where they've either weren't going to get made or they just don't work because they're sort of striving to do much, too much. And another definition is striving with lofty enthusiasm for visionary ideals. 
Another great description of Terry Gilliam's attempt just to get this film made. So that's the kind of character study of Don Quixote. You know, he's striving on a journey that is real enough to him. So it also becomes a film about the fine line between madness and creativity and the relationship between the two. And once again, you know, to explore those themes, you're in the headspace of Terry Gilliam. You only have to look at his Monty Python cartoons to know he's kind of brilliant, but he's also mad as a March hare. Um, and so all of that stuff is swishing around within just the subject, just within the text, within the book, within the fact of Don Quixote, before Terry Gilliam kind of lets rip at it. Now, what I liked about this, to begin with, was that it was set within a modern-day filmmaking scenario. So the parallel with the original book written in, I think, the 17th century or thereabouts, um, you know, this is about a film set and uh, Adam Driver becomes the Sancho Panza character and uh, you know the guy that he's found is plucked from anonymity and given a part in a student film has has got so hooked on the idea of being Don Quixote he's sort of now entered the mad realm of believing he is Quixote and so we have this new journey where Adam Driver's life intercepts uh, Jonathan Price and they both head off on a modern day version of a chaotic adventure, sort of seeing things where things aren't, imagining things where they are, uh, falling in love, not falling in love, being chivalrous, not being chivalrous, uh, you know, believing that they are fighting these great big foes. And so you head off on this sort of mad capped adventure that takes us through Russian oligarchs and, uh, you know, pr uh, producers, sort of, you know, honey trap wives and all this kind of stuff. So it's, it's an incredibly messy and sort of rambling and chaotic jagged edged exploration of, of all these things. You know, the parallels between Terry Gilliam trying to bring this film to the, to, you know, the idea that he could still keep going at the age of 79 or whatever he is to bring this, this vision to the screen is as deranged and as delusional. It's about delusion. Delusional is a good word. It's about as delusional as Jonathan Price believing they're fighting, you know, uh, knights and soldiers and, um, you know, giants. Uh, in the film. And so as I say, the, you know, the, the, this is a film where there are countless, countless scenes which don't exactly blur the boundaries between reality and fantasy, but it does a very good job of just never really clearly telling us whether we're what we're seeing is real or what we're seeing is the kind of strange jaundiced uh, vantage point of of uh, Quixote or, or Adam Driver himself. There's a surrealism to most of the characters and most of the scenes that you, you end up in. You know, one minute a family can seem like terrorists, the next they're a really poor family. It's an extraordinarily energetic and fantastical film that simply sort of grabs you by the collar and in all of its imperfections still drags you over the line. I found myself laughing a lot. I also found myself truly not knowing what was next going to appear on screen. Um, you know, it's very rare these days that you get a film that in, its, in a sense is so sort of uneven in its execution that on the one hand there are bits that fall really flat, there's narrative moments that make no sense, there are certain scenes where perhaps Adam Driver is a bit too gesticulating and we could have done a bit more with some of his sort of interior sort of, you know, working stuff out. For saying, you know, that the subject of Don Quixote is all about creativism, creativity and and, and visionariness and madness and delusions of grandeur and all that. There wasn't a great deal of interior psychology going on for Adam Driver. And yet there were other moments that were just by sheer sort of bravura and, and, and gusto just, just dragged you with it. I mean, a little bit like in the days of, you know, a film like A Clockwork Orange, where if, 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 if a film just decides to do something with enough oomph, it convinces. I went in expecting it to be an un unmitigated disaster and an absolute mess. Uh, and I found myself, despite myself, really entertained. Uh, there was the comfort value of recognising so many tropes from, um, you know, Terry Gilliam's earlier films, right down to how they even had the couple of giants that were just like the giant in the Time Bandits, you know, superimposed onto a real landscape. So you had that sort of giant slow motion thing going on. So oh, that was brilliant. Jonathan Price is spectacularly brilliant as Don Quixote, or the, you know, the cobbler who believes he's Don Quixote. He plays it with so such an earnest belief and passion. Jonathan Price believed he was Quixote. I mean, you know, that's the only way he could have played it because it, he, he, his, his mission, his belief, his delusions, and, and he was he portrayed it in such a sort of caring way. So you didn't just think, oh, this is the behavior of a mad old bint, which effectively he was. You kind of cared, you kind of invested in the stupidity and folly. Folly is another good word. You, you, you sort of invested in the folly of his adventure and his belief. 
and his desire to see a sort of challenge before him that just wasn't there. And Adam Driver, I thought, was a brilliant, you know, maybe at times a little bit empty, but I, I thought he was a brilliant sort of avatar, if you like, for what Terry Gilliam has been through. And I think Terry Gilliam, in the end, pour, has poured an enormous amount of his own frustration and his own journey to getting this film onto the screen into the character of Adam Driver. And so you have this strange amalgamation of a classic tale um, chained to and morphing into Terry Gilliam's own story of the making of this film. And whilst there is that Lost in La Mancha documentary, which is a, a, literally a documentary about them not making it originally with Johnny Depp, this is both the film of Don, Don Quixote, but it's also a film about the making of this film Don Quixote in a way, because you're very much feeling the the folly and, and, and craziness of Gilliam's endeavours uh, in the character of Adam Driver. It's long, but I recommend if you want a genuinely, and you know, weirdly, how weird is it that in the same week that Terry Jones sadly has died from Monty Python, the actor who said, he's a very naughty boy, that very week that Terry Jones dies, this film should come out, seems apt because it was a reminder of the very sophisticated and clever and very particular look and feel and aesthetic to a Monty Python-esque view of the world. And I'd go so far as to say that whilst all of the comedy of the Monty Python crowd was surreal and groundbreaking and all those things and we all have our favourite Monty Python sketches, Terry Gilliam kind of brought that stuff into a very cool place in, the, in terms of cinema language. He's got his own language. He, he's got, he, you know, he shoots from the hip. He just gets stuff made. He's an inventor. He's a recycler. He's an upcycler of filmic techniques. And so with every single one of his films, you feel that not only are they often about the cre mad creative inventions of people, if you think of the Baron Munchausen film or um, Brazil and things like that, but this film also was about an elaborate and complex imagination, um, which, let's face it, Terry Gilliam has got. He doesn't need to take drugs. He's sort of like, he, he, is, a, he is a drug. Just entering his brain is like entering a drug-induced madness. Um, so I found this really in the end rewarding i'd say it's a it, i'd say it's a beautiful disaster it, in its imperfections it's still interesting it's not a perfect film it wanders off it, it's confused at times but you know what there's such a sense of passion behind it and if for nothing else and for nothing else i know jonathan price is getting nominations everywhere left right and center for the two popes this is one of the greatest portrayals of don quixote i think i've ever seen i believed him i believed his folly i believed the lunacy of his missions he was so impassioned he was so committed he was so spanish he was so cavalier he was all these things and so in summary if i'm really really honest i felt a little bit emotional at the end of this film because i think terry gilliam is a much underrated and undervalued auteur i think he's a brilliant okay he's american but he's sort of co-opted as a british britain british filmmaker because of the monty python connection you know he's a visionary when it comes to remarkable filmmaking and remarkable ideas and remarkable vistas and, and pushing and challenging uh, film language, I'd go so far as to say. I think many years to come, we're going to look back and, and, and bemoan the loss or bemoan the fact that Gilliam didn't make more films. Um, this, this was a, a salutary reminder of the jagged and incomplete and sometimes uneven brilliance of a certain generation of filmmakers that I worry, I do sometimes worry, that there's, there's little room for in modern day filmmaking because everything has to be so streamlined and perfected and, you know, audience approved and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, for all of its imperfections, I think that's the, that's almost what makes it for me an imperfectly perfect romp. It's a crazed up, crazy, drugged up, romp of a movie for more film and family fun don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update